my dear students and all the viewers i am dr santosh patel professor of general surgery and minimal invasive surgery today i'll be addressing on surgical instruments surgical instruments are the basics what an aspiring surgeon or a good surgeon always know there are plenty of surgical instruments that are available in the form of non disposable surgical instruments and the disposable surgical instruments the conventional one that are used for the open surgeries and the laparoscopic surgical instruments in this class i will be addressing on the basics of open surgical instruments that are non disposable and more importantly importantly i'll be discussing on the their basic function and some clinical application as well so before understanding a surgical instrument one should know there are some peculiar features a surgical instrument should have what we call as an ideal instrument these instruments are precisely designed and manufactured tools and most of the non disposable surgical instrument must be durable and easy to clean and easy to sterilize all surgical instrument should with uh, withstand physical and chemical effects that is of the body fluids secretions and the cleaning agents the sterilization methods uh, instruments undergoing high temperature and humidity one instrument one instrument should be of durability of edges the springness has to be sustainable and the resistant to these instrument should be resistant to corrosion most of the instruments are made up of high quality stainless steel chromium and vanadium alloys for easy understanding of the surgical instruments it is categorized into four groups one it is cutting and dissecting instruments two grasping clamping and occluding instruments the retracting and exposing instruments and tissue unification or closing the wound are the different instrument so by this basic you can understand the cutting and the dissecting instruments are usually a sharp instruments like for example it can be the blades the scissors and second is the grasping instrument again by this we can make out there are certain instrument that are used to hold the tissues this can be an uh, a traumatic one a traumatic one depending upon the what structure you are trying to hold and third easily makes sense like retracting or exposing instruments are the one which are what we call as retractors there are different retractors that are available in the surgical practice that will be addressing there are special instruments that needs to be mentioned that include the dilators the suctioning and the rinsing instruments electronic devices like cautery machines and dermatomes that are available lots of uh, fiber optic devices are also used the endoscope the colonoscopes and ultrasonic tissue dissectors are also there the harmonic scalpel that also has to be addressed cryotomes and the laser device in this class i'll be addressing most of the basic surgical instruments the special instruments i'll be dealing uh, into the sub sub separate class so starting with first the cutting and the dissecting instruments the main function of these instrument is to divide tissues the suture materials and also used to cut the bandages that is used for dressings they have sharp surface with i have with a blade, either with a blade or with a point that is sharp points the examples of these cutting instruments are the knives the scissors the saws osteotomes drills chisels respiratories used for the separation of the periosteum workman curettes and bath needles and plenty of like other instruments so the examples which i'll be dealing with are the surgical knives you must be aware a surgeon is incomplete without a surgical knife or the blades so one surgeon should know what are the different blades that are available and what are the indication or way we use these uh, blades so these scalpels are used for dissection of tissues because they are so precise and they are well designed the cause of trauma to the tissue is very very minimal and very clean cut wounds so they are mainly disposable blades that are mounted onto the stainless steel handle the handle is called as bp handle brad and parker handle 
and always mounted onto the BP handle before the surgery. Number three handle is the one which is a smaller one used for small blades like 10 number to 15 number blades and number four handle is used for the which is the larger one used for the bigger blades 20 to 23. This I'll be addressing the indications as well. Nowadays many uh, hospitals uh, they are using disposable uh, BP handles disposable which are made up of plastic mounted with the sterile scalpel or the stainless steel blades. So these are the few uh, images that are showing the BP handle mounted with the blade. You can see on the left picture there is a BP handle This is the BP handle which is number 3 and it is mounted with already mounted with the 11 number blade. The 11 number blade is sharp tip blade and this is the number 4 BP handle which is already mounted with the blade which may which is 22 in number usually used for the major for surgeries for the laparotomies or major uh, incisions. So there are different size of the blades that are available. One should know the different indications of the blade for easy understanding wide blade scalpels with a curved cutting edge are usually used for the incision of the skin and the subcutaneous tissue. Thin bladed blades which are sharp tipped knives are used to open the blood vessels, ducts and the abscess. Most of the interns are the students uh, who will be exposed to their clinical practice uh, during their postings. They will be, they'll be doing few surgeries like abscesses. It is preferable always to go with the 11 number blade which uses a stabbing technique to puncture the abscess and drain the abscess cavity. So 11 number blade is the one which is usually used. So there are certain indications like incision usually how to use this scalpel blades. The incision is started with the tip of the knife and continued with cutting edge as soon as possible. Cutting made always from left side to the right or toward the surgeon. For example, if a surgeon is standing on the right side of the patient body for an open appendectomy and planning for a lance incision, he starts incision from the medial aspect of the patient body and extends towards the surgeon or we can call as lateral side of the patient. There are different techniques of holding a BP handle. So there are a few techniques I'll be describing. That is a fiddle bow technique. To, if usually if you're planning for a long incision, it is better to hold like a fiddle bow uh, type position of the BP handle. Then there is a dinner knife position where the skin or other tough tissues needs to be cut. Pen position usually for short and fine incision. These are few images which are like if you can see dinner knife position there is a pen position stab incision usually used for the drainage of the abscess and fiddle bow to make a long incision. After the BP handles and the blades the next uh, sharp instruments or the cutting instruments are the scissors. The scissors are used to divide the tissues, the suture materials and the bandages. There are different types of scissors that are available. The scissors may be a small in size which are usually used for the pediatric use. There are medium sized scissors that are used for the adult size surgeries. If you are planning for a major laparotomy if, for a pelvic surgeries, you need to have a long scissors. The blades can be a straight one or a curved one. Depending upon the tip of the scissors, they are blunt scissors. The best example is the Mayo scissors. The fine scissors are the Mezenbaum scissors and the Sharp scissors are usually one the used in ophthalmology and other vascular surgeries. There are special angular scissors which are angled at the joint called the Lister type of scissors. These are few images you can see there are heavy cutting Mayo scissors. The center one is the Madsenburg scissor usually used for the laparotomies. There are certain indications and how to use this scissors the scissors ag again held with the thumb and the ring finger that are put in the finger rings and the index finger is placed on the shanks to stabilize the instruments it's very very important to follow these techniques many people in the beginners what they do they use the index finger and the thumb to stabilize which will be very difficult always use the thumb and the ring finger for the rings and the 
index finger over the shank that helps in stabilizing the instrument cut is made from left to right or away from the surgeon cutting from left to right with the wrist super extended can also be done cut is usually made close to the tips these are certain images which show the ideal um, technique of using the scissors the second instruments are the grasping instruments these are used used to grasp the instruments or the grasp or pick up the things and hold and manipulate the tissues tools and other materials there are uh, certain applied indication like they are used for retraction the blunt dissection and also used for hemostasis whenever there is a subcutaneous tissue cut is made and there is a bleeder that is bleeding immediately the surgeon immediately holds the this bleeder with this graspers this graspers can be forceps also occlusion of the tubular structure such as bubble and ducts can be used to prevent the leakage of their contents so in the grasping instruments there are different types the instruments are available there are non locking grasping instrument means there is a no lock they are the called the best example being the thumb forceps the thumb forceps can be a blunt one or the toothed one then the second category is the locking grasping instruments means they have a peculiarity like they have locks means if a instrument or a structure is held it needs to be held in place with the lock with a firm pressure then there are hemostatic forceps then a traumatic hemostatic forceps and the traumatic hemostatic forceps then the other grasping instruments are the needle holders and other grasping instruments used for holding the tissues and textiles what we call for the doins instruments for the holding the tissues now coming to the non locking grasping instruments or the thumb forceps these are the simplest grasping tools that are available in different sizes which can be curved or straight with or angle blades usually used in the dental forceps then there are blunt forceps or which are used for the dressing forceps and there are sharp forceps usually used for the eye dressing forceps the most important uses of these grasping forceps are hold the tissues during cutting and suturing retract them for exposure like lifting the skin and subcutaneous tissue for flap uh, raising and all usually we use the thumb forceps and usually if there is a subcutaneous tissue bleeders you can just immediately grasp with the grasper forceps or the thumb forceps used to dab for with the pack of sponge and gauze strips in case of bleeding or mind oozing soak up the blood and extract some foreign bodies these are certain images uh, for the thumb forceps you can see the thumb forceps the first one is a blunt one and the center one you can see there is a tooth forceps as well usually the technique is to hold like a pencil they grip when compressed between the thumb and the index finger teeth of the tissue forceps are usually hold to the vessel uh, better to avoid it is better to avoid holding the tooth forceps with the hollow whiskers because there are high chance of injuring the hollow whisker structure of the if there is a medium size vessel there are chances of injuring the medium size vessel also which may lead to bleeding or if in case if it is a bowel there are chance of going into minute perforations so locking grasping instruments or surgical clamps these have the important instruments because they are have a certain locking mechanism associated with them they are springy handles alone also called as doin clamp there is no lock they have just springy handles alone when it is springy handles are combined with a ratchet we use used as a locking grasping instruments called as hemostatic forceps they have uh, one instrument has four different components that is a ratchet lock to lock the instrument and release the lock and finger rings to hold the instruments and these finger rings are at one ends of the springy shanks then there is a joint and then there are jaws the jaws may vary the jaws may be a smooth surface like intestinal occlusion clamp the jaws may be serrated one called as cotcher's best example is a cotcher's clamps or the peon clamps if the serration is asso uh, associated with the teeth it is called as cotcher's clamps it may not be associated with the teeth called as peon clamp so it may be a traumatic one for the 
art, like the artery forceps it can be a traumatic one that are usually the bulldogs or the intestinal clamps which are used to hold the softer tissues where injury is not expected the locking instruments are again held like scissors the thumb and the ring finger into the finger rings clamp is finger ring and clamp is stabilized with the index finger lock can be opened by pressing down one of the finger rings while elevating the other one with the ring finger so these are few uh, instruments that are available with the locking mechanism then there are certain hemostatic forceps all the uh, locking instruments now will be discussed as hemostatic forceps which can be a traumatic one or traumatic one the main means are used to establishing hemostasis during the surgery means the name itself indicates if there is a bleeder usually these instruments are used to hold the bleeder they are available in the straight form or a curved form the tip depending upon the straight or the curved one the few examples of traumatic hemostatic forceps are the mosquito the cautchers the lumitzers forceps the jaws can be straight or curved with the tip are usually blunt except the mosquito forceps which are usually sometimes some surgeon use it as a dissecting forceps as well the dissector has long shanks and the end of the jaws are curved at 90 degrees a traumatic hemostatic forceps or the non crushing hemostats if the damage to the vessel or the tissues must be avoided so these are the best instrument and other examples are intestinal occlusion clamps where a trauma is not expected in such cases usually we go for a traumatic intestinal occlusion clamps if there is a major thrombosis in the popliteal artery for example and the pop thrombectomy has to be done you have to occlude the lumen of the vessel by bulldog because the, if you do not do that there will be gushing of blood constantly which will be difficult for the surgeon to visualize so you clamp the vessel proximally and you do a thrombectomy and you suture the vessel as well after doing the procedure you just release the bulldog because the benefit is it does not cause any physical damage to the vessel then next instruments are the needle holders modern surgery suturing performed almost exclusively with curved needles held with the needle holder that is designed for grasping the and guiding the needles they are usually have a ratchet so they are, do have a ratchet lock there are different types of needle holders mathew needle holder are curved shanks with a spring and a lock mechanism that are held in the palm then there is hegar needle holder which resembles a hemostatic forceps but the shanks are longer so they and relatively short jaws there are serrations in the jaws to grip the needles for the instrument that are given in the viva and they will be dis- told students will be told to uh, discuss the points uh, that differentiate it from the hemostatic forceps the groove if a student picks up the groove in the jaws that is the instrument that helps in holding the needles during the surgery the next is the retracting instrument the retracting instruments are handheld retractors there are examples that are rake retractors plane retractor or roux retractor are the langenbach retractors these are the retractors which are held with by the assistant for the better exposure during the surgery they cause minimal damage to the tissues there are certain ex- retractors which are not manual retractor they are called as self retaining retractors examples are willander self retractor and gosset self retaining retractors for abdominal surgeries again there are balfour retractors which are usually a self retaining there is a lock mechanism you stretch the instrument and open the uh, self retaining retractors and put a lock to that if you have a one hour or two assistant shortage you can use or for the better exposure of the abdominal surgery you need an assistant to do uh, holding the tissues instead of retracting you can go for these self retaining retractors the better uses are usually to hold the tissues and organs aside there are devers retractors that are used to separate the liver for cholecystectomy there are balfour retractor for laparotomy that helps in these all these instruments help in better exposure visibility and accessibility of the surgical field so these are the images which shows there is langenbach retractor the curved one are the roux retractors and the self retaining retractors the last category is the wound closing instrument and the in materials this include the surgical needles and the suture materials 
the given uh, link below is the one that I have already discussed in my previous class in detail about the surgical needles and the suture materials. There are different types of suture materials that are available, the functions and the indications, everything in detail I have mentioned. You can just click the link below and you can get access to the class on needles and the suture materials. Thank you. Kindly subscribe, like and share for more videos on general surgery and related topics and please do click the bell icon for notifications.